Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, designing your own uh, PCB board with GLC PCB. Ordering from uh, GLC PCB is fairly easy and they're extremely fast at making them and shipping them. If you are making small boards, there are two layers. They're very easy and very inexpensive. If you start doing four layers, or if you are doing some like big boards, you start to get into some heavier weights. You gotta make sure you factor the shipping as well and uh, the cost of four layers and fancy designs are a little bit more, uh, but still a fairly reasonable service. And they can show up at your door fairly quickly, especially if you opt for the fast uh, shipping service. Rather than doing a video on how to design a PCB uh, and starting with Easy EDA, there's so many of those videos out there. I'm going to talk today about a few tips that are going to help you design a better board. The first thing is you want to look at is your track width. If you notice all the tracks are very tiny, even some of the power supply tracks, and that's not acceptable, especially when you have so much room on your board. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into the design and then click on design rules. And as you can see, it says the track width is 0.3 millimeters, that's tiny. And so what you wanna do is create a new design rule. See how it all says default, default, default. So what we wanna do, we're gonna add a design rule we're going to first give it a name. So let's call it power, for example. And uh, so under the track width, instead of 0 0.3, we're going to put two millimeters. Clearance, give them a little bit more clearance, maybe one. And uh, by diameter, we're not concerned about these in this case, so we're going to leave them the same. And uh, that's about it. And we're just going to say, uh, apply and then you click on settings then what you're going to do is you're going to go back again so now we're going to go into design rule again and we're going to say ground click power we're going to click apply you should see it changing to power and vcc same thing apply and that changed to power then you're going to click on settings and uh, let's double check it one last time just to make sure yes we have power here we have power here so we can so now what you want to do you're gonna have to, nothing have changed as we noticed but you still need to uh, reroute everything so we're gonna click on the auto router and we're gonna click route and automatically you're gonna see that things have changed but not everything has changed you're going to see, some example, a couple of things here that you'd wish that uh, they got bigger and they are not. And they are, for example, it says here J2.1 and this is J2.2. So if you want these, for example, to be bigger, you might want to go back on the design rules again. And uh, we can say G2. Dot one also change it to power j2.2 oh, apply and same thing with that and we're going to apply there i'm going to click on settings i'm going to click auto route again and i'm going to click the auto router and as you can see now we have some nice decent uh power supply that's not running into those tiny little grids Another thing, if you do have the room, you're still, you know, all the rest of them don't have to be so tiny. So we can create uh, another design rule. We're going to add one more. And let's call it, let's just call it general, for example, just for, for argument's sake. And uh, we're going to give it, this time we're going to give those one millimeter clearance, about 0.2 and uh, bias again we're not concerned here don't have any bias and uh, 0 0.305 we're just gonna go into say settings we can go back again to make sure it's still there and now we should basically uh, change everything to general so where it says default that's gonna be general apply 
apply. Then we're gonna click settings again. And we're gonna go reroute everything one more time. And we should be able to see all your other uh, tracks are much wider now. They're more at a decent size. Because the tiny ones are basically the limit of manufacturing and you're taking a bit of chances by keeping it that way. I also highly encourage you to check some of the online PCB trace widths calculators. There's quite a few of them. And that's going to give you a more accurate way to really know how wide your track should be at a minimum and also you can always go from there and adjust it to what you like but at least you know what the minimum requirements are. Another tip is the proper orientation of your part. You know that you, when you click on a part you can actually move it around any way you like and if you see here they are crossed and that's not acceptable. So what you want to do, actually even if you look at this capacitor also they're crossed. So what we want to do, we're going to go and reverse this one and reverse that one. And then we're going to go route and auto route again. And right away you can see how we have nice straight lines here, we have nice straight lines here, and that's the way it should be. So always pay attention to how your parts are oriented. Now, another tip is you want to keep your digital circuit away from your analog circuit. And that's a very important thing. So let's just assume for just curiosity that this is particular area is your, for example, your analog area and the rest is a digital. So what we want to do is you can highlight things by just drawing, by drawing a square just like that. And that should highlight all these things. Now, if you highlight something else by mistake, just press Ctrl and click on that. And that takes it out of the way. Now what you want to do, you press Shift and you click on the whatever you highlighted. And we're going to move it away as much as possible. So let's just put it here. Now I could also make the board bigger and even bring it even further away. And so what you want to do is you want to highlight the edge. And once you highlight the edge, you can make your board bigger. So I'm going to go here, and we're going to go here. A little more, keep it square. And now we are going to highlight those guys again one more time, because that wasn't like for me enough movement to keep them away. And we're going to move them as low here as possible. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to reroute everything. And as you can see now, we have a separation from the digital to analog. There has been separation. Or it could be sometime you have just an analog circuit, yet you have your power supply, for example, here and your sensitive circuitry here, and you also want to uh, separate them. You may even have a buck converter, which emits so much noise. Those ones you really need to put as far away, if at all, on your board. I would probably put them on a separate, completely separate board if I want to go that route. But, I mean, I would go more for linear stuff, but let's just assume you're doing that. So try to keep basically noisy things away from your sensitive uh, analog devices or anything that's sensitive to for, uh, for a matter sake. Another thing you might want to consider is whenever you can, is try to make more than a two layer boards. Two layer boards are good for like very simple circuits. They are not really, uh, you know, not high end stuff, nothing crazy. Uh, but what you want to do is create a, a four layer design. The tools a layer manager and where it says pretty simple to, you change that to four, click on settings. And now you got yourself, if you go into our layer, and if we look at our, our layer here, now we have the top layer, the bottom layer, and we also have inner one and inner two. 
and uh, by if you click on them now and you can take those two out now you can see inner layer one and here you can design inner layer two that is the visibility and that's for designing and uh, that's going to allow you to put more uh, more copper in between some things, uh, things that could be more like to send more power so for example you can decide that on my inner one i'm gonna make uh, a big uh, power area one is half of it could be positive half of it could be negative or you might have a ground plane that's for uh, for the digital areas and another ground plane for the analog area so there's so many things you can do with layers or oh, it could help you just route things uh, even better Next thing we're going to talk about here is creating copper uh, areas and uh, so or some people call it copper poor and so if you go into basically right here the dotted one you'll see it says copper area so you select that and you decide basically you want it to be on the ground before you actually do any of this you want to decide which layer you're actually adding the copper layer to so you want to make sure you put the editing thing in the area where you want to add that copper layer. So let's say we are putting it on the bottom. So we're going to add it into the bottom layer. Now we're going to go into the copper area and we're going to select which net you want to do. So we want to do a ground, basically copper area. The most common one there will be ground. I'm going to say, okay, so what you want to do now, you could see you get this double uh, square line. So you're going to highlight a little area And click here, click here, here, and here, and you and you right click, and as soon as you right click, uh, it automatically you've got your uh, basically your copper area. So now you've got a much better uh, design. And if I hope you like this tutorial about all these tips to help you design your own PCB board. In the corner here, I'm going to put some different songs that are very well recorded that you can listen to on, on your system. In the corner up here, I'm going to put a link on how to improve the power in your house so you get the best power to your system. A speaker will be in the middle if you'd like to subscribe. You can also join my Patreon and help me out as well. I hope to see you again. Take care.